Hey, Flower Churin, it's Nayoka Nadi, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to the latest episode of the Between Worlds podcast. In this episode, we're diving deep into the woo-woo with Kindatopia, musical artist, writer, and performer. We will discuss music, near-death experiences, Jesus, Swedenborg, and more. Whether you're passionate about these topics or just curious about them, you won't want to miss this conversation. Subscribe now and hit that notification bell so you're the first to catch all of our latest episodes. Let's bridge the gap between the known and the unknown together. Catch you in the episode. Peace. Hey everybody, it's your girl Nayoka Nadi, and I'm back with a brand new episode of the Between Worlds podcast. I'm here with a very special guest and my very first interview with an artist by the name of Kindatopia. I'm very excited for them to come on the show today. Today we will be discussing near-death experiences. Kindatopia recently dropped a brand new song called Welcome Home. It is an awesome track. I left the link down in the in the description for you all to check out. So please go ahead and check out Kindatopia's new song called Welcome Home. It's available on all streaming platforms. Now let's welcome Mr. Kindatopia. Welcome to the show. Hello, how's it going? Hey, thank you so much for coming by to the Between Worlds podcast. I appreciate you um, accepting uh, my call for an interview. I'm excited to be here. This is going to be a good discussion. Yes, it's going to be an awesome discussion. Uh, we had an awesome talk already. And one of the mm -hmm. things that we talked about is your brand new song. Can you tell the audience some information about that? Yep. So the song is called Welcome Home. Um, and you can see from the artwork, it's it should be obvious about what the song is about. It, I wrote it from the perspective of from what I've come to believe will be our first moments um, that every single one of us here on earth will experience right when we die of our spirit leaving our body. And whether you believed or not believe, finding out that uh, life continues on, that this physical body that we're in isn't, you know, it's not everything that there is, that we have a soul inside of us. And so it's called Welcome Home because it's about the first moments of going home from where we're really from, our uh, our home in the heavens in the spiritual realms. So, awesome. So, what inspired you to create the song? Um. So, for the last mm, probably ten to twelve years, uh, so I, I was first introduced to near death experiences about ten to twelve years ago. Um, I saw a documentary that was called Glimpses Beyond Death's Door. Um, and then there was a book that accompanied that documentary that went into more detail. That was my first one. Uh, since then, I've read dozens of uh, books, either firsthand accounts of near-death experiences, people who have had them, um, or books that were researching, like gathering data from hundreds of different uh, near-death experiences or just other spiritual books in general that just kind of talk about, um, you know, the spiritual nature of things beyond beyond earth. And, and I've got some of my favorite ones here uh, with me, uh, Heaven and Hell, Emmanuel Swedenborg, Imagine okay. Heaven. So well, we can talk more about that later, but yeah. So, um, so this has been kind of a passion or even a little bit of an obsession, I guess, <laughs> right. for, for most of my adult life since I was, 20, 2021 is when I discovered it. And then, yeah, I've, I mean, I've also watched hundreds of probably close to a hundred different YouTube uh, interviews, people talking about their experiences and just all the information I can find on it. Uh, I'm obsessed because I love, um, I love what, what these people and what these people who've gone through these experiences you can see like the transformation in their eyes. You can see 
like how genuine and how kind and how loving they are. And that's the kind of thing that I gravitate towards. Uh, I, I also believe in the power of manifestation. And so I want to manifest those kind of people, that, that kind of energy around me, positive energy. And people who have had these near-death experiences, have had these positive life transforming uh, experiences. Mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, yeah, I just wanted to make a song to kind of celebrate that um, feeling because I was like, there's there's not really music that talks about this. It's, it's a niche topic in general, and then for music on top of that, it's like, yeah, I, I, I don't know of any other songs that talk about it. So I said, yeah. right, I guess I'll fill that void. Yeah, that's what's up. I love that. Um, so basically, mm -hmm. your inspiration is just learning that there is life after death. Is that oh, yeah. one of your inspirations? Okay. Yeah, no, I, I haven't had a near-earth experience myself, but I've listened and read and studied so many of them. I, I feel like, I, I mean, when, when you go into that level of research, you just, you can see all the details. That's one of the things that we'll talk about today is uh, there's so many commonalities that every single story, every person's experience is a little different, but there's certain elements that are all the same pretty much across the vast majority of them, so. Yeah. Awesome. So what is your favorite lyric of the song or verse? Uh, all right, let me pull up the lyrics here. Um, I think my favorite lyric would be... Um, to me, it's, uh, it's in verse 2. Uh, it's the second half of verse two. So it's following right after the lyric before is. So I also kind of wrote this. I tried to write this, the lyrics to this song. Um, it's written kind of from the perspective as if the person who died, it's trying to be first person so that whoever's listening to the song can put themselves in that position. Um, because people who believe in life and people who don't believe in life they all experience the same thing because a lot of near-death experiences I've uh, watched and researched so many from like atheists too, who, who believe that you die and there's nothing. And lo and behold, they have this experience and then they know they have this, such a powerful transformation to suddenly become such a spiritual person, which is evidence. But so anyways, um, the, the, the lyrics here are written from the point as if maybe it was someone who didn't quite believe or wasn't sure there was life after death. And so maybe their family was that way. So the lyric here is they're looking, it's from the perspective now, they're looking back down to earth from, they died, they're in the spiritual realm, but looking down to earth or see their family members. It says they're looking so confused, I can see all their pain because they don't believe they'll see me ever again. So the, right. that, that's the context. But the lyric right after that, this is probably my favorite, is because this is the message I'm trying to share. But it says, but it's okay, I know everything will work out. I understand now God's plan is perfect, have no doubt. Because awesome. um, to me, that that's the core of like why I made this song is that probably that lyric right there is, we worry so much, but everything's gonna be fine. No, no matter what you believe or what you experience, the amount of fear and anxiety that we go through as humans, the amount of suffering we go through, everything's gonna work out. That's really? the message I wanna share. Like. No matter what, the things that, that you want, the things that your soul is drawn to is is will continue after death. And so people that want lots of kindness and humility and love to give and get love, you're going to get that. And also even for the people that some people like, you know, some people like being selfish and self-centered and things like that. They'll, they'll get some something for them too. I mean, it's going to be different, but the point is everything's going to work out. Like we, we have so much anxiety, worrying all the time. It's part of our human nature, but yeah, everything's going to work out. So and I that's, think, that's my favorite lady. Awesome. And it, it makes me think about people that are grieving over someone that has passed, you know, it's oh, yeah. a song for them too. 
yeah. it, that, that that's a huge part of this too is that i mean that's a huge part of unit experience is, is mm-hmm. a lot of the purpose is to help people that maybe just had a child pass away a brother a sister a parent a spouse um yeah. even a pet um yeah. just any any loved one and and you're not sure if you're going to see him again well there's an undeniable message from hundreds of thousands of people who have had unit experiences that life does go on so it's a message of hope yes yes awesome you know and there's a whole purpose behind you know every story and how things oh, yeah. play out you know you you kind of notice that when you go deep into it mm-hmm. and uh try to connect with like your higher self or you practice these methods of like hypnosis and things like that you find out mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you know there's more to the story and we all kind of play out our lives basically like a play you know yeah, exactly yeah <laughs> yeah and there's going to be more roles and you're going to meet the same people again the same souls again and play out more stories that you that you wrote in the first place mm-hmm. you know so that gives me hope as well like to have those ideas and like you said through all the research that you've done you know i've come to like a similar understanding of you know what this continues all is done like you said you know it's already done it's all gonna be okay you know yeah, absolutely yeah so uh can you share with us some of your role models yeah so uh we, we talked about this earlier um but i know it might sound kind of cliche or maybe it's uh too basic an answer, but the, the answer I gave for my role model was just was just Jesus, um, and specifically like his character, mm-hmm. what he embodied, how he carried himself, how he treated other people, how he, you know, he's a very uh, mythical character, a lot of legend, a lot of different beliefs around him in and outside of the religion of Christianity and history. Um, But from what's actually written there um, in the, in the Bible, in the the section that he's in, his character uh, is my role model uh, of um, what I want to embody. and I actually have some of the those characteristics um, pulled up. If you want me to share share some of those, yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and because I know we talked beforehand about uh, throughout this discussion, well, we're not. This isn't a, a discussion about Christianity. It's it's about spirituality and your ethnic experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, but for for my personal beliefs, I I lean towards Christian beliefs. I have beliefs that are outside of that as well, pull mm-hmm. from spirituality and from other religions. But at my core, it's that. And, but, but I like to focus, and the reason I call my, my content, my channel, Kindotopia, is I, I'm looking for the values that unite us um, across all belief systems. But anyways, um, as far as the character of Jesus and things that he um embodies that, that why he's my role model uh, i was going to share just a little bit from his sermon on the mount uh, which was in uh, matthew 5 through 7 just a few few of these lines i want to i want to point out because because what i'm going to say too it might be a little sometimes it's often controversial and this is another thing about if you look at the character of jesus when he was actually teaching during his time he was very, very controversial. I mean, all of the the religious leaders, the the, the religion of uh, Judaism, the Pharisees, everyone that was teaching, they hated Jesus because he was telling and teaching people to do things that were opposite of them. Um, but he was preaching kindness and love, and right. and a lot of that wasn't being. People were focusing way too much on the dogma, on the the rules of their religion. And don't mm-hmm. do this. Don't pick up this thing and move it here on Sunday or you're going to hell. And it's like Jesus came to de- abolish all that because it's like, that's just not true. Right. But um, 
some of the things that he said during the Sermon on the Mount, which I think are some of the wisest knowledge that we have. Um, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So people who you know might be poor in spirit, like you've been, you've been run down by life. Blessed are those who mourn, for they'll be comforted. People that have felt sadness, they will, they will have the opposite of that. Um, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Um, that's gonna. I'm gonna touch on that again in a second. Um, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So people that. A lot of times, uh, this is a common thing in life in general. A lot of time to do the right thing is the harder thing or the thing that's going to get you more opposition. You know, doing something that that is selfless without thinking of yourself, that it puts someone else above you, well, often you're going to get like, it's a thankless uh I can't think of the word, um, but let me skip ahead a bit. Um, all right. Uh, oh, it's I four nine. Okay, yeah. Here's what I wanted to touch to touch on, uh, and this is one of the things that I won't go into too much detail, but I'll give a little backstory after I share it. But eye for an eye, he said, "You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for tooth." But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to the, turn to them the other cheek also. If someone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. So, this this is like one of the single hardest things I think that he taught, but I think that is so important. And I'm going to touch on themes of of unity of of all being one, um, because yeah. this is something that near death experience people, not just Christian, just people who have had near death experiences of all different faiths and religions, beliefs. I have noticed this common theme that they all talk about how we're all connected. We're all connected to source. So some people call it gods or call it the source. The powerful thing that has created everything that we're all connected to, that we all share a piece of, um, that is the reason why we are actually all part of the same thing. Like right. physically, not metaphysically. I agree. I agree. So it's like, yeah. So, and it's like everything, including plants rocks animals us our souls the air everything atmosphere everything that exists mm -hmm. is part of this spiritual power um so right. basically the point point is if you're hurting someone else you're actually hurting your, yourself right and if you're hurting yourself you're hurting other people right so it's like people that do self-harm Mm -hmm. They're hurting other people. You hurt, you hurt other people, you're hurting yourself. No matter what you do, it's affecting everything. Yes. And also everything is affecting you. And so so this this, this is like the, the, the core of what I think he was trying to say here is that people, people always want eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You know, he says, do not resist the evil person. So it's like no matter what you do in this life, it's human nature. This is by design this human body that we're in, the tendencies that it has, it's built to be selfish. If you just, if you think animalistically, you just go off hunger, uh, sexual desires, like whatever things that the human body naturally, if you take out the mind and thinking and morality, ethics, any of that, this human body is geared to be selfish. It doesn't like, you feel pain, physical pain, emotional pain, your reaction, the human body's reaction is to retort from it. So basically the point is to grow spiritually, which is what I believe is the purpose of coming down here. Our spirits, they want to growth. The only way to grow from things is to experience it. Because it's like you go to school, you learn about something, you don't really get it, 
until you live through it, until you experience it, until you right. feel it, right. feel it for yourself. And so, um, so I'm losing my train of thought because there's like so many abstract ideas I'm trying to to, right, to, right. to wrap into one. But um, going back to what you said about you know, this is a common thing that people hear: you slap your face, turn the other cheek. This person sues you, give give them their coat, just to not resist them. So this is something that's really hard to do uh, mm -hmm. because when someone hurts us, when someone takes things from us, when someone is malicious, is mm -hmm. um, on purpose, mm -hmm. it is so hard to let go of that mm -hmm. and to still love that person unconditionally. Right. I think I think it's probably the most challenging thing on earth, and I won't go into details. Um, but I have had some very, very powerfully, um, what's the right word? Uh, <laughs> malicious, maybe not malicious, but I have been very badly betrayed, very badly backstabbed, very badly mistreated, disrespected, like to incredible degrees, which I don't want to go into detail on. And my natural reaction when that happened was I wanted revenge. You know, I wanted to make things even. I wanted to, like, I was, my, my entire life was flipped upside down. And this has actually happened multiple times, my entire life flipping upside down. But this second time when it happened to me, was, I mean, for a month straight, all I did was just, well, like when I say that everything I worked for my entire life and not physical life, even eternal life, like my beliefs, everything was just completely shaken up. And mm. I was just broken. Like I, I didn't want to continue life. I didn't want to continue anything. My only, I lost my family, I lost my best friend. I, I felt completely alone. The only person I felt like I could turn to was God or source, whatever you want to call it. Um, the the power, the powerful inner self connected with what's up there. Um, and through a lot of work, I, I was able to come to that point where I've totally completely forgiven everything and everyone who's done those things to me. And, and I have to say myself too, like uh, this isn't a victim game. Like I, I had plenty of faults and I still have so many faults. Uh, I can't even count them. You know, I, none of us are, are perfect people. Yeah. And a lot, of, uh, I do have a tendency to self-sabotage too, but again, I, I'm not getting the details. So the point of what I want to share is this, this, uh, the path of, of doing what was actually taught here of turning the other cheek and like not to just to do it with a smile on your face. So, so yeah. to, to connect all this to what I'm talking about too. I mean, I've released this one song, welcome home, but I have a whole album that I'm, mm -hmm. uh, it's about 14 songs right now. They're all centered around kind of these themes of kindness and forgiveness yeah. and spirituality and finding your best self and being awake and blah, 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 blah. And one of the songs I have is called smile through the pain. Okay. And that, and it kind of goes over all of what I'm talking about right here is re rethink, re, uh, you got to ch changing the way that you look at the world to, yeah. to know and expect bad things to happen and to actually welcome them, like genuinely welcome them with a smile on your face. I mean, pain but smile because you you recognize understand that this is going to give you an opportunity to grow this is the whole point of coming here if you want to be happy and have no problems that's what happens after we die like that where we came from before where we're going to after everything that's not here on earth yeah you're going to have it you're going to have that life without problems stress free constant happiness absorbed in a endless powerful love and light that's there that time's coming the point of being here is to 
open up our capacity to love, to try and become more like our source who's unconditional in his love and in, in their love. Yeah. And so to break that down in a way that I think can apply to anyone because yeah, some, some of what I mentioned there, you know, leans into, I guess, more Christian beliefs. But the point is, which I think that all belief systems, all religions or, or even non-religious people can agree on is, I mean, you can't know until you experience it, but looking for those opportunities when people hurt you and being nice to them in return, genuinely nice, not just doing it as an action. I mean, at right. first you, at first you got to force it, but if you make a habit out of it, it becomes real. It becomes real that you really feel it that when like, when someone is, uh, I don't want to swear, an a-hole <laughs> mm -hmm. to you, to like, just in your head and your heart, just be like, recognize this is a part of you that's trying to hurt yourself. Let's not, let's stop that right here. Let's be a recycling center for that negativity. Let's return it positive and say like, hey, we got different, we're seeing the world in different ways right now. You're upset at me. You don't like something about me. Mm -hmm. um, that's unfortunate, but hey, I just want you to know that I, I genuinely love you and I wish the best for you. And a lot of time you're going to say and do that, and that, that might trigger people, make them even more mad, whatever, depending on the situation. But you just got to be real about it to actually feel that and just be that and embody that. And, and I think that's the hardest thing to do in the world. So I've gotten better at that because <laughs> I've been getting a lot of opportunities to practice okay. it, but I'm still not perfect, far from perfect. So don't don't take me as an example of, but I like that message and I want to share that message in my music because it's what I'm striving for. I'm never going to reach it while here on earth, but I'm going to treat growing and getting better at it and hoping that other people that feel the same way that want to try and be like that on the real. Yeah. Uh, that we have something to look for, look to or towards um, for in common with that. Right. Which is um, yeah, these songs that I'm making uh, about that yeah. thing. So sorry, that was a, a long tangent about what was the original question, but like role models. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, so I agree with you, you know, in terms of I consider it the phrase all is one or all is mine. Mm. And, you know, mm. we all share consciousness. Yeah. Um, we all, you know, are on this planet Earth together, basically, and we can make it go up or make it go down vibrationally. Yeah, it's vibrationally. Yeah, yeah. It's a raised vibration. That's a good way to put it too. Yeah. So I do think, like you said, it's, sim it's a symbiotic union. Like we have to work together mm. and cooperate and things like that. And um, I believe that there's many paths to the same, the same idea, you know, and you found the same all is one, all is mine by reading, you know, that Jesus verse, you know, by reading what, they said in that chapter and that's awesome you know we could find the same information in different books you know it's just exactly. our connection to our higher self that that really plays a role in our understanding and um another thing i was going to say is a lot of people that have near-death experiences they do often see jesus you know mm -hmm. and so as a non-christian for me I've learned to, I was a Christian, you know, but I'm not into religion per se, but right. I've, come, I've come back around to understanding, okay, there's a Jesus, you know, I, we create our reality. We create, you know, these entities, I believe at times, you know, they serve a purpose with our thought forms and things like that. So I believe that there is a Christ consciousness. I believe there is a Buddha consciousness and, you uh -huh. know, what people uh -huh. experience, I believe, I, I understand that there's something behind it. You know, so I try to keep my mind open to that. So I just, I definitely want to point that out with near death experiences. Experiencers do have visitations from Jesus. Yeah. And, and from other spiritual masters as well. That's something that yeah. I heard of. Yeah. Like, like you mentioned, Buddha. And, yeah. Like, as long as it's all pointing us towards the same, like, unconditional love, that's what matters. That's what really matters. So. so what are some of your favorite near-death experience, sir, stories? Yes. So um, <laughs> it's such a hard work because I had so many. But uh, my favorite uh, isolated story 
um, of recent years is uh, Vinny Tolman's. Uh, and so he, he's done many podcasts. He was on um, Next Level Soul, his podcast. Uh, he was on Beyond with Heather Tesh. Uh, I mean, you search him on YouTube, Vinny Tolman, you'll find tons. And, and he just released a book, I think, one or two years ago, which I actually haven't read the book yet. I just ordered it uh, this week. So I'm going to be reading it. But it's just, uh, from what I understand, has more details of what he's already shared. Um, in all these YouTube interviews he's done. Um, but he's actually also, he is a part of IANS, which is the International Association of Near-Death Studies. Uh, so it's an international organization that's all about studying near-death experiences. Um, so he's actually a, a part of that organization as well, which they just had their conference in Arizona a few weeks ago. Um, but... So Vinny told me his, his story, I mean, just the details he goes into is why I would say it's one of my favorites for sure. Um, okay. So I would just say dive into that. But um, another one that I would say, uh, and this is a huge, I don't even know if it's to, to call it a near-death experience, but more just spiritual. So, so I have one of the books here uh, that's called Heaven and Hell. So it's written by Emanuel Swedenborg. Um, and this this guy, I mean, I would almost say he didn't have a religion, but it's like almost like if he had a religion, what he talks about like makes so much sense. Um, so I mean, he was a he was a philosopher, scientist, super successful guy back in the early 1700s. Mm -hmm. So this is like like 350 years ago almost. Um, <laughs> But he's written many, many books. Uh, he, he was in Europe, in Switzerland, somewhere in Europe. He wrote everything in Latin. So so everything that we have now is not not many people know about him. It, it, he's very, very much a deep cut. But uh, all of his stuff has been translated to English uh, now. And his most popular book, he's got like 30. But um, Heaven and Hell, this is, I highly, highly recommend. And it, actually, it's all free to um I have I bought a physical copy just because I liked it so much, but there are free ebook versions. But but I want to go just talk a few of the details. So Emmanuel Swedenborg, very similar to when Jesus at his time. So uh he he for the first like 30, 40 years of his life, he was very much like a scientist of his time, um a very wealth, like very wealthy, successful created a lot of inventions and, and just contributed a lot to society. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, his life took a complete 180. And like the last 30 years of his life, he was writing all these spiritual books. And, and a lot of the things he wrote went against what the Christian church, which all the big Christian religions at the time were teaching. So a lot of them were calling him heretics and thinking he's crazy. Kind of right. similar to this thing you see with Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's a common thing of, I mean, human nature, I think, with religion, the longer religion's been going, a lot of time, again, there's these rules and regulations and things that people do in a religion that mm -hmm. a lot of them, I think, are just kind of arbitrary that people are missing the message. But anyway, the things that he was sharing. So Emmanuel Swedenborg started having these spiritual experiences where almost every night he was um, dying or having out-of-body experience and going up into these heavenly realms, into spiritual realms for like 30 years straight almost like on and off. And so he wrote about all that knowledge in these, in these books. Right. And, and um, the, the, the way that I found out about this too, was the very, the, the documentary that I watched my first experience in near-death experiences, the documentary and book. Um, okay. They talk, they talk about this guy, Manuel Swedenborg. Right. And so that's where I was introduced to it. But it, it was actually a, a few years after that, where I, um, actually started looking into his material. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, it's so detailed. It's it's something you'd have to, to go to look in on your own to really get get into it. But um, as far, if, you, if you're looking for details about like every little thing that you want to try and know about spiritual existence outside of Earth, like nitty gritty details, complicated details, well written out details like this is where you're gonna find most of it swedenborg's okay. teachings yeah like 
he goes into so much detail and so many. And the thing is, it's translated from Latin and it's like 300 years old too. So a lot of it, you're going to read, like I'm reading this and I'm like, I got to reread it like three times to, to like understand it. Um, but it's so profound. Uh, so, but there is a, a nonprofit organization called the Swedenborg Foundation and they have a website. It's called Swedenborg.com. But on there, uh, they have the link to all of his um, books, like uh, ebooks, PDF for free that you can download. Okay. Um, so and, I've heard of him, um, and I've, okay. I think I had a brief like moment of checking him out, but I haven't really gone into detail. So I can definitely double back and uh, check that out for sure. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you could. I mean, literally, there's a foundation. There's this okay. nonprofit. To, <laughs> so there's so much detail there. I mean, you. I, I'm still going through it now. I mean, it takes years to go through all this material, but the place to start if you're looking is Heaven and Hell. This this yeah. book. And he has a I big like, YouTube following too. Yeah. So so there's a YouTube channel yeah. that's a part of this called Off the Left Eye. Uh, okay. There's a, yeah. link, there's a link to it on the website, Swedenborg's home. But Off the Left Eye is the YouTube channel by Curtis Childs. He he hosts it. Uh, and he's done some interviews too uh, with like Next Level Soul, which is one of my favorite podcasts. Okay, um, yeah. He, he's done interviews with um, you know other podcasters too, but because he's made it his life's work basically, like his religion almost is basically just studying Swedenborg and his teachings. Mm -hmm. But they are so profound. They're, they're so much focused on the unity and what I think. I mean, he has another book, Swedenborg. One of them is this called True Christianity that I haven't. I've uh, seen excerpts, but I haven't read that whole one yet. But again, it goes again to like get so far away from the judgmental parts of Christianity, of like modern contemporary Christianity that so right. many churches teach this. You're going to hell, fire and brimstone. It's like none of that, none of that's accurate. Like God source is a powerful, infinite love. Look at every near death experience. What do they experience? It's endless love. No judgment. I mean, there's this common theme that you see the more you research it. Yes. There's dozens and dozens and hundreds of experiences that like like I'm convinced of that fact. You can't convince me that that God is not just an endless amount of love. Um, so all this preaching that a lot of mainstream Christianity and big mega churches teach of do this, you're going to hell, just doesn't ring true. So Emmanuel Swedenborg, but he the things that he shares about what he was taught from angels while they're in heaven. Like, again, it, there's too many details to go, but I highly, highly recommend people that, that want to dive deep. That okay. Like, yeah, I mean, it, I, I, I found, love it. I found this uh, website, and it just says, Swedenborg viewed God as an infinitely loving entity who is at the center of our being. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a good way to look at it. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah. A lot of things. A lot of things he talks about are things you're not going to hear in any other Christian church. That there's so much deeper and focused on the spirituality, the spiritual aspects, of like how things really are. Um, mm -hmm. So that I think it it can appeal a lot more to people that aren't Christian as well because it's. It just makes sense too. There's so many questions of like from typical Christianity that they, they come up that you know people ask but like, well, if God and if Jesus is the only way to eternal life, you know, what about this person that grew up on an island and never knew him and then died? So what? They're just doing like just so many questions that don't make sense, that judgmental. That right. I, I have all my questions answered. In this book, so so can you walk us through some of the steps of an NDE that you gathered yes. from Swedenborg and others? Yeah. So I got pulled up here. So a lot of the common characteristics of NDEs, and I've definitely seen this from the, I'll just say hundreds, but probably like close to a hundred, maybe a little less, a little less, that I that I've personally read about or watched or etc. Um, but there's a, a sense of separation between body and spirit. So this is something that, again, this isn't 100% of every experience because every experience is tailored to the person. But it's like you see like a, 
80 to 90 percent correlation of most or at least some of these things I'm going to list, but sense of separation. So being having an awareness mm -hmm. that you're still here, you you have some kind of body, but seeing your physical body on the ground or wherever, you know, people working on it, very common. Um, if you're having like a, your body's having a seizure, you're watching your body have a seizure from a third person view and watching people try to resuscitate you as an example. So a feeling of separation, you know, seeing, which that's the very first lyric in my song, Welcome Home, you know, I'm slowly rising up. Wait, what's going on? I see my body laying on the ground, but I'm still here. So uh, that's one of the first common aspects of near-death experiences or NDEs as they're referred to. Uh, another very common one is a tunnel. People talk about going through a tunnel, being surrounded by darkness, but seeing like a pinpoint of light in the distance. Mm -hmm. um, and very commonly and often people say this tunnel, you should, your human senses would make you feel scared that you're in this dark place, this dark tunnel, but it's like the environment is just filled with like unconditional love and, and peace and acceptance. Um, so that's a common thing. I mean, and this has been so common that even, you know, movies and pop culture of the last 30 years, you, you sometimes hear when a character in the movie is dies or dying, one of the other people say, don't go to the light, don't go to the light, you know, it's because it's right. become so common now. People have heard, heard that it's even mentioned in, in pop culture in that way. So, yeah, really quickly, the rest, uh, so light being surrounded by um, light that's, that's, it's not like physical light that, that we see on earth, just like sunlight. It's like light that you can feel, light that you can experience. Um, and it's way brighter in the sun, but doesn't hurt your eyes. That's another common one. Okay. The emotions, uh, we kind of touched on that already, just endless love, peace, joy, like beyond anything. They, they, they all say it's like, take the maximum happiness you had on earth. It's literally nothing. It's like not even a millionth percent of like the amount of love and feast, which is, that's great to hear. Right. Uh, life review is another one. People usually see like a panoramic vision of their life, everything that they experience in their life. But they also, they see it really fast often, but they also see and experience every single detail. They feel all the emotions they felt at that time. And they feel the emotions of other people in each event that happened to them they right. feel what they did to other people so if you did something bad to someone you feel what they felt and vice versa and you feel the good things that you did from them yeah so that, that's, that's another common one that's one of the scariest parts of it i think it's like how you <laughs> feel like what you did to others like yeah well i, I don't think it i don't think it's it, it's, well, a, it's, a, it's a it's a lesson <laughs> yeah it, it it's uh it causes a bit of anxiety because you're like oh yeah man i've done some messed up stuff so i'm gonna have to feel that but it's like yeah but you feel it for a moment and then you learn and you move on and that's the point mm -hmm. and that's the point of life so but yeah no, definitely <laughs> i got stuff to look forward to that's like oh <laughs> why why did i do that i was yeah i relate <laughs> yeah um encountering deceased loved ones so that's another very common one seeing family members or friends um pets people do see their, their pets even in heaven that's a lot of experiences talk about that so more evidence and sometimes they'll even receive information that there's like no way they could know they go back come out of their experience and now they're telling people still on earth things that they never should have known we get you again it's just like how else can you explain that then they actually were there with in spirit with someone else and had a discussion uh communication is another one so there's no talking like we're talking right now uh language is all thought it's like telepathy but you also feel you you feel so there's zero room for misunderstanding in this other realm in heaven or spiritual world whatever you want to call it is that communication is thought to thought feeling to feeling with all the intention of every everything felt as well mm -hmm. uh, so there's no more hiding there's no more saying something you can't lie anymore basically because <laughs> your lies will just be right they'll know like out in the open yeah. everything so, is yeah out in the open telepathic. so keeping it real 100 all the time it's just this is how it is um and then 
Mm. The so also uh, uh, movement. There's no you you think of a place and you're there. You, you go you move extremely fast. It's basically like teleportation. That's not like, I mean, that's just cool. <laughs> also, not teleportation just in uh, distance, but also time. So there's another thing they talk about. Everyone talks about in their native experience. There's no time. Time is an earth where there's a future and there's a past and there's a present. But in this other realm, you can move forward or backward. Everything is all at the same time. And you can experience things multidimensionally. Multi, your, your attention span isn't just I have one car. You can right. have and experience multiple conversations and multiple things all at once and be in multiple. You yeah. think you can think of five different of your friends who are all in five different places and you're all talking to each other at the same time. And and like physically being there almost. It, it's it's very it's can't explain it. And I and I haven't had the experience, but from watching so many, yeah, the, you just see that time is very, very different. People who always worry, always stress about time, that doesn't exist anymore. I mean, you, you have all the time that you could ever want. Right. Like they and, say, the soul is not in a rush. You yes, know, you might exactly. be, but the soul, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, I think the, those are like the main ones that I would cover. That's like what the majority of any experience, near death experiences, will have. Often, all of or some of those things, uh, those aspects happen. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for breaking that down. Yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. And um, uh, everyone, go check out. Kindotopia's new song, Welcome Home and the Project. So it ties in, like you said, it connects all the ideas. So I definitely want y'all to check out the entire project. Yeah, and my my next single is actually coming out this Friday on September 20th. Um, so that one's called Love Me Anyways. And that one's, it's about self-acceptance, uh, trying to learn to love yourself despite the flaws that you have. And kind of being in awe that people could love you so unconditionally despite that. So that one's coming from a place of vulnerability. I wrote it for like all the mistakes I've done and I like feel so bad about it. But yeah, I'm still loved unconditionally by source, by God. You know. Awesome. Um, well, so. make sure to just drop it in my inbox. Send it to me. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming through and sharing uh, some of that information for us. We really appreciate you. Uh, I hope that you have a good rest of your day. And is there any, thank you. Is there any final words you'd like to share with the audience? Uh, I just want to encourage everyone to, to chase that, that everything we talked about today, that outside words don't really matter. You got to chase what's in here, chase uh, who authentically you want to be. If you're living a lie that you know, you're living a lie. Get yourself out of that lie. Chase what's authentic. Chase the things that that uh, make you a kinder person, that make you a more loving person, mm -hmm. uh, if that's what you want. If you don't want that, then then don't do it and keep being selfish. And you know, if I meet you on the street and you're selfish, I'm gonna love you anyway because because I want to be um, an expression of unconditional love. And I'm still flawed at it, but. <laughs> try my best and i hope that we can all let's, yeah. let's raise let's raise the vibration together let's yeah. just be kinder gentler and more forgiving and uh yeah yeah that was well said and totally agree i really appreciate you sharing that message and thank you so much for coming to the channel and i'll catch y'all later between worlds podcast see you in the next episode all right thanks all right. see ya Peace.